When I was a kid, I thought I had the most horrible genetics on the planet. Uh, my brother had a belly, my dad had a belly, and uh, pretty much everyone in my family was not in shape. So I always thought that my destiny was to be someone who just couldn't have a flat stomach and who would always wear shirts to the pool because he was embarrassed about his body. Something that I realized when I started to get my body into shape is the fact that it really didn't have anything to do about my genetics. Yes, genetics matter, uh, the insertion points of like your muscles and your genetic predisposition to gaining muscle, these things do matter, but at the same time, when it comes to getting lean, it really comes down to what I ate and what I drank. And specifically, I wanna talk about the things that I drank that uh, caused me to believe that I had horrible genetics. So one thing you have to understand about me is that I was a latchkey kid. When my parents would be at work, they would be at work for probably like 12 to 24, sometimes 24 hours, they would actually sleep at their business in order to get jobs done. So that left us kids pretty much to not necessarily fend on our own, but we had to get takeout. The favorite takeout of our time was getting McDonald's. I would be able to just crush two Big Macs, supersized fries, and a supersized Coke all in one sitting and still be hungry afterwards. As I said, when I started to get my body in shape, the really cool thing about it is that it starts to create this virtuous cycle. So I started to go to the gym, and then after going to the gym, I started to really look at the things that I was eating. And one of the things that really stuck out was the amount of sodas and fruit juices I was taking in my diet. It was a literal epiphany. Pretty much like every single liquid that would go into my body would contain some form of calories, and it would either be in the form of a Coke or in the form of concentrated juice. Now, I'm probably saying or revealing my age a little bit, but I remember the days where you had concentrated little cans of juice where you would take them, they would be super frozen, and then you would put them in a big jug, you would put some water in it, you would stir it all together, and then voila, you would have fruit juice. Uh, that, that, that is something that just has stuck with me since childhood. One of the other things that I realized is that a can of Coke has like 140 calories and 39 grams of sugar. It also contains 34 grams of caffeine. And holy shit, now I know part of the reason why I was such a shit kid and always in trouble was the fact that I was taking in about four to five of these every single day. And then when you're doing that, that shit adds up. So one of the biggest changes that I made when I started to get my body in shape, when I started to get lean, was trading all these sodas and fruit juices for water. And while that in and of itself is a hack, I actually wanna share with you a system that I have just learned and created over the course of time, because I do believe that drinking water and doing it in the right way is one of the most underrated tips to getting lean in the long term. And in today's episode, I want to share that with you. So the very first step that you wanna do is you wanna drink water first thing in the morning. Now, the reason why you wanna do this is because you have gone literally anywhere between seven to eight hours uh, without water. So when you're waking up, your body is massively dehydrated. So something that I do is literally take a liter. This is actually about like one and a half or actually two liters of water, but I take a liter of water and I, I down it essentially first thing in the morning before I do anything, before even coffee hits my body. Now, the reason why I do that is because one, it helps me hydrate. Two, it also gives me a little bit more energy. And if there's anything that we know about energy, it actually has an effect on how much or how little of an appetite you're gonna have throughout the day. Now, there is something that I do with uh, my water as well, is the fact that I put electrolytes in them. So I first started by putting little pinches of sea salt into my water and I kind of continued on. I, I, I get these things called element packets or element T, or I use something that's called Relight. And I add electrolytes to my water because I have actually found that doing so increases the amount of sodium, increases my ability to take in water. It also makes the water taste a little bit better. And lastly, uh, this is probably gonna be a video for a little bit later on, but it basically stopped my habit of going to the washroom in the middle of the night and having to go pee because 
when you take in more sodium, it actually stimulates this uh, hormone called vasopressin, and then that enables you to take in a little bit more water and to actually hydrate yourself a little bit more. So water, first thing in the morning, it doesn't have to be a liter, it could be 500 milliliters, it could be like a glass, but essentially water first thing in the morning before coffee hits your system is the first step. Now the second step is to drink water before and after your meals. And the reason why we do this is because it's just going to enhance the satiety that you feel after you're done that meal. So I'll use an example for myself. Like one of the reasons why I started to drink water in the first place was because it just made me feel fuller. And one of the things that we want to do, especially with our meals, depending on like what kind of meals you're eating, you want to feel more satisfied and feel more fullers from the meals that you eat. And yes, you could eat slower or you can eat to 80% fullness. But for a lot of people, that's not possible for them, or actually they're not willing to do that in the first place. So drinking water before and drinking water after is essentially zero calorie. And what it does is it just fills you up. And then when you feel more full and more satisfied from the meals that you're eating, then it kind of curbs the want to eat after that meal or the want to snack, which usually happens for a lot of people. So the second step is to drink water before and after your meals. And one thing I will say, some people are gonna be like, well, doesn't that ruin your digestive system and all this kind of stuff? Well, there's no evidence that actually points to that. I've gone through the research. It is essentially an old wives tale. Now, the third step is we're still sticking with the meal. We are not going to drink liquids with the meal. And there's a very specific reason for this. So one of the reasons why people drink liquids with meals is to water down the food and to make them put the food into their bodies a lot faster. This is the reason why a hot dog or people who are in hot dog competitions, they, they like to line their stomachs or they like to make the buns full of water so they can just like condense them and put them into their stomach as easily as possible. Now, what this does is it actually speeds up your ability to eat food. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to slow down. We want to be able to chew our food so many times that it actually turns into liquid so our bodies are able to properly digest it. And also it is the way to kind of like slow down that pause between stimulus and response between thinking that you need a meal and actually feeling fuller. So this one is not necessarily supported by evidence or science, but I don't necessarily need everything that I do in my life to be supported by evidence and science, although I use it as a guide. So one of the things that really worked for me was just not drinking water or drinking any liquids while I ate. And then what this did, it forced me to chew my food and slow down. And that made me fuller. And that also gave me more energy because I was not using any excess energy when I was digesting my food because the first step of digestion is actually in the mouth. Now, the final step is to use water as a way to replace any boredom snacking or emotional snacking. Most times, and I'm not gonna say every time, but most times when people snack, they're usually bored or feeling some form of an emotion. It is not necessarily because they are hungry. And actually, I wanna share with you a little bit of a water test right here that you can use to see whether or not you are actually hungry or whether or not you are just numbing yourself. And here's the trick. So. Anytime you feel like snacking, one thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take a big glass of water. I'll use uh, this one. This is, well, this is like my coffee cup, but you could take a big glass of water like this. My wife gave me this coffee cup. It's, it's one I use every single day. I love it. And, uh, and yeah, anyways. So you're gonna take a big cup like this. You're gonna drink the water. When you feel like you have to snack, you're gonna wait about 10 to 20 minutes. And then if you still feel like eating, then then go ahead and eat. But most likely, you know, you're, you're probably going to be busy doing something else and completely forgetting about the fact that you need to eat in the first place. And that's actually one of like the keys right there is like, you know, one of the keys to stop eating is to actually keep yourself busy. Uh, when people are idle, they usually go grab for like all these random things, you know, in order to appease their boredom. So one of the things that you may want to do is just like keep yourself busy. And, and it's for some people, that could actually mean like playing video games to get their minds off of the fact that they have to eat or even watching Netflix or something like that. But whatever works, it doesn't matter, especially if this is something that you've been dealing with for a long time. And that is the final step. It's just to replace snacking with water. 
And when you do this, you're gonna realize that you probably were not hungry in the first place. You were probably either bored, emotional, or even dehydrated, because that shows up as hunger a lot of times when people are not hydrated. And that is the four step process of using water to get lean and burn more fat. It really has nothing to do with raising your metabolic rates or making you burn fat faster. It really has everything to do with controlling the intake of food that you put into your mouth. And that is one of the best and most effective ways to get yourself lean. So if you got any value from this, I, I just hope you got value from this. This has actually been something that's like helped me. It's been something that I've created as a habit inside my own life and also the lives of my clients. And I'm gonna say this, like it works. When you put it into action, it actually works. So one thing I want you to do from this particular video is to try it out today. Try out, you know, drinking water first thing in the morning, but if it's not in the morning, then you can go on with the other steps, which is to drink water before and after your meals and not to drink water with your meals, which is the next step and to replace snacking with drinking water. And uh, when you do that, or if you've done it before, I'd like to hear from you in the comments below, drop it down. And uh, yeah, again, I hope this is valuable for you. And uh, I'm gonna be coming out with these every single week. So please like and subscribe. It's gonna help the algorithm. And I will see you on the next video. Take care and peace.